As we began discussions with the developer, and the mayor has commented that I began conversations with this developer in February. Uh, those conversations in February covered many of the issues of what were the infrastructure needs. Uh, some of the folks in this room uh, visited with me several years ago when I was in public works. Same basic issues resulted in the Ashby High Rise discussion. What was the impact on the public and what could the city do about the infrastructure impact of a development project? Um, when the conversations began, the developer committed uh, and did not know in those early conversations. They actually were in a bidding process and a lease negotiation process of who the tenant was going to be in this development, but we surely knew that it was likely to be a retail project. Uh, the proximity to the number of rooftops in the area made it clear that was the highest and best use of the project, and certainly what we've seen along Washington Avenue, what we saw along Sawyer Street with the target development, is those projects have done well because of the size of the residential community and the increasing density that is occurring along Washington Avenue and the areas proximate to that. The developer up front told us, and we believe has continued this dialogue and discussion with their prospective tenants, that whatever went in there, uh, they would make a commitment to work with the tenant so that the architectural styles were compatible with the neighborhood. I admit that the city is not in the taste police business. Our building codes from the beginning deal with structural issues, they deal with electrical, they deal with plumbing, and they deal with infrastructure interactions. But that's a commitment and the way this was to be achieved is partially what has been going on for the last two months. Dialogue between community leaders, community members, and now the tenant that has been selected by the developer in this project. We started off talking, however, about some absolute minimums that we would expect from the city. At the time this project was put together, the city's design standard for sidewalks was four feet. The commitment was the sidewalks would be wider than that. The city's standards for trees have a certain number of trees and specify them by the size of the trees. We, we, we early on got a commitment for a larger caliber and more dense population of landscaping there. An area I'm very familiar with is the whole question of White Oak Bayou and the work that we have continued to do on regional detention, on the regulations of operating in the floodplain, and things that uh, relate to something that, that does affect this community. And I'm certainly very much aware that uh, over half the houses in the city of Houston today that are in the floodplain are in fact along White Oak Bayou, uh, from the northern part of Ant Antoine right up to downtown Houston. Uh, we uh, required, as part of the discussion, that uh, work be done to improve the bridges on Heights and on Yale, that the abandoned rail line be removed, which serves as an impediment to conveyance in White Oak Bayou, that there be improvements on the bridges itself to physically handle the traffic, and that the bayou slope itself that goes into the bayou uh, be regraded re 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 and re-improved with seating and other improvements there. We got into conversations of road access and clearly of all the letters and the comments that have come into us, uh, the one that has been most prevalent has been the issue what happens to traffic uh, with something that is likely to generate a lot of customers. Uh, Kohler Street is of course the east-west street just to the north of the site that I showed you in the previously and there were discussions of extending it over to heights so that people could go north or south coming out of the area. Uh, right of way was required to do that. Um, the existing intersection at Bonner and Kohler, and I'll come back to just pointing these out on the map a second, uh, needed to be improved concrete-wise, traffic markings, and signage-wise. Uh, Yale Street itself uh, needs to have a widening of this, an extension of 41 feet of roadway with 6-inch curves. Bass Street, which goes north from Kohler to what Textock is constructing in the new service road along I-10, uh, needs to be constructed. It is largely a dedicated and unimproved street. Um, 
the existing roadway is really not functional today and it needs to be replaced uh, with an asphalt roadway with, ditch, with appropriate drainage on it. And the intersection at Bass and Spencer needs to be improved with concrete pavement, traffic markings, and signals. So what I've indicated in the streets, as you can see where Kohler is on the north part of the site there, Bonner certainly just west of the property itself. I'm going to return back to drainage because uh, certainly uh, it's not simply enough to talk about roadside drainage in this area. Uh, On-site detention if required by the city. Uh, any analysis of any improvement in the city requires approval by the city engineer of the drainage impact of that project. Uh, there is something called time of concentration, which an engineer, a professional engineer, needs to seal and demonstrate that if any project increases the runoff into the city's public drainage system, the developer needs to account for that, either through on-site visible detention, underground detention, which is often called inline detention, or other means so that the public drainage system is not increasingly burdened by a project itself. That is a standard practice within the city. Uh, we've identified and preliminary estimates and plans have been put together by the developer to deal with both drainage, a 24-inch reinforced concrete pipe system, uh, with some uh, a sewer system, manholes, and storm inlets on the street. And then, in the case of Yale Street, the 36-inch line, we believe, is inadequate and needs to be upgraded to a 48-inch line and other changes made to accommodate what will likely be uh, the increase result in increase in pervious cover that this project will, in fact, generate. The net effect is what we've shown here as a preliminary sketch of the project. Uh, the site itself and the folks at developer will talk about some reconfigurations that have done on the loading docks and how uh, deliveries would be managed in a way that's least intrusive to the community, uh, how in fact deliveries will occur, what time of day they will occur. Uh, issues still need to be addressed on how traffic lights would be put into the system to not impede the overall flow and mobility from the site. Uh, there are pad sites shown on the front of, front of this, not identified and with a tenant not specified yet, uh, between Yale and Heights. But in all cases, this is the schematic of where we are at this point. Uh, in all of the physical infrastructure improvements I've said, the developer will need to put them in on their own nickel. Uh, that's part of the development project we have. And if they meet the city standards and satisfy the permit requirements that they need to get on every aspect of this project, uh, they will be reimbursed only from the taxes they generate on this project. Uh, that is the leverage the city has, is our opportunity to deal with things like uh, enhanced landscaping requirements and things that by code are not necessary or the amount of time that the developer spends on listening to the community and reconfiguring this site in ways that wouldn't normally fit the template that a developer has. 